Greetings once again folks and welcome to yet another session of My RT Musings. Um, as you can see behind me, uh, we continue with this uh, portrait of my beloved little Kit Kat and, uh, and so we continue. Um, welcome to, to you if you've happened upon my channel um, and uh, have yet to subscribe, please do so. Um, if you enjoy that what you see and hear today um, that is and uh, if you do subscribe then do hit the bell icon so that you get notified of any future uploads uh, like and share and by all means comment so uh, yeah hope you enjoy the, the process today and uh, we shall continue right where were we where where were we and where are we uh, I wanted to continue with this, uh, with this sort of, with the white treatment um, a little bit during today's session. Um, and also I shall be introducing a wee bit of colour as well. Um, so. As I have been explaining, and I shall continue to explain as I go, um, obviously we have, we have highlights and shadow. We have dark and light. However, um, and, 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 and in, this, in this particular instance, we have cast sunlight, um, early morning sunlight. So we have a definite um brightness on the very um extreme left of his of his sort of profile um however we also have shadow over here but we also have different colorings um and lightnesses of uh, lightnesses and darknesses of his uh of his fur given the stripes the dark stripes and the lighter bits and the white of his fur as well so we have to compensate for that um, so in the white of the shadow areas we'll I'll bring in some some pale blue um, and a little bit of lilac to 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 compensate um, so it still it still maintains that that whiteness without being too bright, and then of course I'll I'll balance that with a, with a quite a bright white um, chalk pastel on these extreme highlighted areas. Um, there's quite a bit of contrast in this in this particular um, in this particular piece. So, uh, I'm just going to be working those up during the course of doing the proceedings of this, of this session, little by little. Mind you, I think we've done enough um, of the charcoal work for the time being. So, what I'm going to do is start introducing some, some of the yellows. Let's have a little array here of colour. Um, let me get these sorted out. Um, yellows, marigolds, etc. So, at this point, I'm going to work with the, and most of it actually is most of the colouring is actually, and it's quite subtle colouring. I've got I've got browns. I've got. Um, um, the black obviously of his of his fur which is not going to be deep deep black except for perhaps around the eyes and a couple of these more pronounced markings um, which i shall use um, black conte and perhaps even a little um, compressed charcoal i don't know we'll see when we get there but for the most part the darkness or the shadow areas are well 
catered for with the use of the charcoal. So, yeah. And then I've got the, the burnt umbers and oranges and marigold sort of coloration, etc. Um, and it's quite a medley of, 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 of hues, Huey Lewis and the Views, um, with, with the coloring here. So he's got more the whites go into the sort of um, rusty oranges and reds and then into the into the more um, looking like it's a vegan poo brown is what I'm using at the moment um, and into the more olives slightly more olives so I'm going to be bringing that in as well the olive green um, that'll be a nice um, quite a nice introduction just to just to just to in further enhance that <clears throat> that that differentiation in color and tone and and uh, contrast and what have you so um, so yeah I'm trying to see I, I, as many of you know I, I did do a, a a, a portrait of Kit Kat a few weeks back and although it turned out quite quite nicely um, um, it was a it was a good exercise I wasn't entirely I wasn't entirely happy with the um, well the posture yes but also or the, the the perspective rather and and then also for me the coloring the use of light and shade wasn't quite up to par for me in my standards um, so that's why I decided to to capture him again um, and using a slightly different slightly richer deeper palette even though I'm using the same the same pastels I am just enriching these colors a little bit so they're not quite so insipid if that's what I was doing previously I don't know no, I'm quite quite tapped into what I was doing amiss if I was doing anything amiss in terms of color but it was a good exercise nevertheless as I said Here, kind of a, a slight mustard. We're going to be introducing a lot of colours, and then eventually we'll we'll tackle his eyes, um, which are these wonderful golden orbs, and uh, that should really help this piece to pop a little. I don't want to saturate this 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 artwork with color. I want the uh, <clears throat> I definitely want the uh, the charcoal to 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 come pulling through here quite nicely. So let's just bring in some of the uh, it's a slightly terracotta kind of uh, kind of brown. Yeah, so I don't want this to, I don't want the, the, the pastels to overpower the, uh, the, the the charcoal work. And there's a little twinge, twinge, is it the right expression? There's a little tint here and there 
of this colouring. So I just want to to bring it in and a little brown as well. Let's work with the brown as at the same time. I think this is sort of a chocolatey brown, but I, I use that sparingly, very sparingly. I don't want to be. I'm not, I'm not a fan of brown. I don't, it's, Anyway, I think it's just a, it's like a, I don't know, there's a sort of, I use it very sparingly. Um, chocolate brown is just like this sort of a, almost a dead colour. And you can create the right kind of, the right kind of balance of colour and tone and tint um, with an array of other colours. I like to work with the uh, with the kaleidoscope of colors uh, is what I like to call it. <clears throat> Let's use a little bit of marigold here. Um, is this the right one? Is this the right kind of marigold that I'm using here? I can't see most of them properly because they're usually covered in some other color. <laughs> but yes. Um, just a hint. It's like this. This the light is casting this sort of a golden glow, and I want to try and capture that a little bit, even though it's not really that apparent in my reference image. I just still want to pick up on it so that it's there. Not really at, at this point, I think. Sort of a wheaty colour that I'm using now. It's very, very similar in, in uh, tonal value to the paper itself. So I'll just bring in for a little. Let's use my. Erase a tool a little bit here as well. There's certainly a kind of a salt and pepperiness to, 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 to parts of his, his fur um, that I want to try and pull out. I'm going to pull his fur out. <laughs> I'm going to capture that. Ah, oh, there we go. There's a color that I want to use. Just in it. Sort of a peach color, skin tone color, um, but it just is nice to use in conjunction with, as you'll see, um, a wee bit of black Conte flex, a smattering of that. Right, and then Let's bring in this slightly darker. Let's just get a little bit bold with this. We can work it, we'll work on it afterwards, but I just want to be It's always good to sort of kind of overcompensate with with the not with the application of color but with the uh, with the balance of it and not to be afraid to to be bold and bright if necessary and vibrant 
because you can always tone it down afterwards very successfully in fact so, such that it, it becomes got this nice little transition across the bridge of his nose where the sun is just just catching the, 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 the one in the middle and then going into shadow right so now what I'm going to do is just work in a little bit of black Conte as I've mentioned before this is a work of subtleties because of the very subtle changes uh, characteristically of KitKat um, that it's it's important to to still maintain those oh I'm gonna get yeah I'm gonna get uh, black and color on my face um, yeah to maintain those specific guidelines that pertain to his character specifically um, <clears throat> So I don't lose his essence <clears throat> and it's it's obviously more important to me because you know he's my cat and and so I know him intimately um, in terms of his looks and and so on so it might not be that apparent to to you guys but but to me it is and so I need to maintain that. It's also a good exercise in observation for future pieces, for future um, portrait artworks in particular. Just using these really light flex, flicks of the wrist to get these short, sharp, but light strokes. And incidentally, um, I must just as an aside, I'm sure many of us get attempted scams at some at at some point or another. But I've just had a I've had a spate of people on Instagram in particular trying to trying to scam me recently, um, and in particularly particularly to do with my art. And yesterday, I had a someone request of me to do a a portrait um, of her son's dog pet dog and um, you know I said to Wendy that something doesn't quite sit well with me in terms of the in terms of the language in terms of the how the dialogue was conducted it just seemed off um, <clears throat> anyway I, I followed through with it I I told her I told this person who was in New, New York supposedly probably somewhere in Nigeria or Indonesia or India or something like that but nevertheless so I, I, I gave them the, the particulars of what it would cost to do a portrait um, 
and then added what it might cost to to actually do the portrait as a as a YouTube session series. Um, but none of that was really that it didn't seem to it didn't seem to to go through. Um, it didn't seem to reg register with this person. So that's when you know I started to go think uh, this is this is not, this is I know, I know which direction this is heading. And sure enough, it did. So um, I had said, well, this is the price, but then we also need to factor in what it will cost to courier the piece once complete. Um, and that's that message I tried to get across more than once, but it was ignored uh, repeatedly. So, um, You know, I knew that I knew where it was heading, and sure enough, last night I get this I get this screenshot of a of a PayPal payment. Um, all very dinkum looking, but it was a screenshot none, nonetheless, as as proof of, pay, of as proof of payment. Um, and then telling me that I must I must also look in my in my spam folder because you know. Now, why on earth would it would it would it would it, would have verified um, PayPal payment reflect in my spam folder? I mean, I'm on PayPal, and and uh, and uh, you know they've got my email address that that pertains to PayPal specifically. So why on earth would it link anyway? Anyway, sure enough, I did, and of course I know it by this time it's a scam. Um, an attempted scam. Yes, so this person had put through three hundred dollars without even when I said, "Listen, you have to wait until we have factored in the the um, the courier fees, etc." But no, so they they didn't listen. They just said, "I'm going to pay," and then did did supposedly pay, but sent a sent a a uh, contrived photoshopped screenshot as such um, <laughs> and then said and then apparently so then then this email came through in in my spam of course with a big warning from gmail to say you know watch out for this it looks dodgy which it is of course um but this this supposedly you know, they're using all the PayPal text and logo and everything else to say that, 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 that there has been this payment, but that some kind of, because I don't know, there was some kind of, it was blocked or something like that for some reason. And, uh, and in order to, in order to let it go through, I had to, <laughs> This is how they're trying to get you. I had to pay an extra hundred dollars to this person uh, in order to unlock it. And I thought, uh, you know, you absolute, you think, I mean, but think people are that, that gullible. I, you know, it's just, it's been some time now since I was almost scammed. You know, somebody tried to scam me, but, you know, uh, obviously the red flags come out and I know what to look for now, but they try, you know, and they think, that people are stupid but obviously some people are and they catch them so you know if I'm sure that many of you have been had attempted scam scams um, yeah but you know just play it safe don't don't just stick to your guns. Uh, you know, I've also have people trying to, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm busy trying to get into the whole NFT market, um, which is difficult enough for me to even get wrap my head around at this point, but I am, I'm busy with it, but I'm doing it progressively and I'm doing it safely, but I'm, I'm getting a lot of, I'm getting a lot of requests by scammers again, trying to get me to to uh, upload my artwork to certain NFT marketplaces. 
websites and um, so but then what what is required with with these websites is that you pay in order to upload your stuff you have to pay what's called gas fees um, and and they can be quite pricey now I'm trying to do it in, a, in, in such a manner that I'm with a join a reputable marketplace um, and where I don't have to pay gas fees initially anyway until I'm st established but um, you know so you pay these you're supposed to pay these gas fees so now what these what these guys what these guys do how they try and scam you is they they try and get you to upload that your they say well you pay a certain amount two hundred dollars mind you um, and gas fees to upload your work and then they will purchase and then they give some ridiculously you know enticing um, figure that they are willing to pay for your work once it's uploaded onto this site so I go and you know they suggest this the site that I must go and upload my work to and then I go in and uh, well, I go onto onto Google and I do a search on these on these the sites mentioned and they usually come up with red flags that could be hoaxes and I go right gotcha another scam so um, yeah there's many many different people different ways that people try to catch you out there and and so so what happens is is then I would have paid let's say two hundred dollars to upload my work um, expecting to to receive now to have this this individual this unsavory character now purchase my work as nfts for thousands of dollars um, which is what they claim um, and then you never see them again you've paid your gas fees but you never see them again and that's it because they've taken all of that and gone that's what happens it happens time and again across the world people trying to hack into your accounts and and pull a pull the wool over your eyes pull a fast one on you i mean it's just such scarcity there is such scarcity in this world <sighs> yeah so it's 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 really it's really quite a disappointment you know, so it's really hard to actually find um buyers well, people wanting to commission you so this woman was trying to was was stating that she wanted to commission me to do a to do a portrait you know and I you know legitimately at at first I legitimately was you know not quite keen but you see not once did she use my actual name you know not once did she say Hi guy, I'm interested in your work. I'm following your work. Um, she did say that, mind you, but didn't use my name and didn't actually follow me. So yeah, um, that was that was one of the first indications. The second indication was that when I looked at her profile on Instagram, there was there were no posts. Um, and that's what happens with most of these people who try to scam you. They don't have they don't have a, a, a profile as such. Or well, it's a fake profile in any case. And uh, yeah, so no actual engagement, no no actual asking of questions like one would normally expect. If somebody is interested in purchasing your work, they will inquire as to how you go about it, what the, your fee structure is. Um, how long it will take yeah when they start getting down to, to down to oh well, I'm ready to pay kind of kind of bullshit then then you know and then they're going to pay you without even asking any further questions I mean who who on earth would do that I certainly wouldn't who knows what I'm about you know so uh, anyway just be aware of these kind of people 
the world is full of them. And they will take you, fleece you for every cent that you have or don't have. Anyway, so this 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 particular individual, I just uh, I reported her profile on uh, Instagram. Not that it will do much, but anyway, it's, I suppose it's something. I reported her profile and blocked and what have you, you know. It's just it's just irritating, honestly, more than anything else. It's just the lumen irritating. You spend so much time and effort engaging and in, and in, and in with these people, you know. Yes, I was um, dubious almost from the get go, but still, you, you you kind of I don't want you kind of of the I don't want to lose potential a potential sale. And then you go down this path, and ah, uh, you know. Anyway, I'll, I'm I'm forewarned for next time as well, and you know I'm a little bit, but it's it's just so silly. So I'm using a little bit of um, sorry for the for the uh, diversion. Um, I'm using some olive green here. If I can get this blooming wrapper off, gosh. I've bitched about this before, this particular brand of pastels and certain of their pastels, not all of them, have this paper wrapping which has got this crappy glue on it that, uh, that doesn't peel off. The, others, the other ones of the same brand, mind you, have got um, plastic wrappers and they're fine they peel just perfectly these blooming things anyway I have to admit they're not Windsor Newton or Brownie or any of these other better, better known and and also mind you expensive brands so and it is a very good brand however I, I, I enjoy it I do enjoy these pastels at least most of them some of them tend to be a little bit hard others are nice and soft and they they, they work really really well um, so as you can see I'm using this olive green and and just to bring in just to deepen the the tonal value here um, Giving it a little bit more depth and substance. Uh, right, what else? What else? I think I'm going to introduce a little bit of blue here as well. Let's try this. Speaking of hard pastel, hard so-called soft pastels. This is a deep indigo. It's okay. It's okay as, as far as pastels go. I, I, I don't particularly like working with it does the job I suppose in a way for the little that I do require it so here as I said I'm bull, I like to build this sort of a kaleidoscope of color it's it's really does give it a lot of depth a lot of dimension and still I can see the uh, the charcoal beneath so it's almost like laying colored glass over it it's just gives it quite a nice lovely texture And of course, one must remember that in your shade areas or shadow areas, you've got your cool colors, which is which blue is, and it's a nice. Depending on the, the range you use, it can it can really. You can even you can even sometimes 
substitute for yeah well the charcoal is the basis of this piece but so so i can't escape that but if, if it was a painting we i wouldn't be using black at all i'd be using a a, a range of dark blues indigos um dark purples um dark greens um a nice range and spectrum of color and they just kind of almost deepen the shadow areas especially the deep shadow areas such that it's not it's not it's, it's not a hole it it, it 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 i can see that it's it's not a deep crevice here it it it, it there's continuity of the fur as it, as it, it lays on his face there's direction because all of the colors that i am using i'm using them with going with the direction of his of his fur and this is why i like to work slowly as you can see um i've said before um because when I do work slowly and I do work softly and methodically, it builds up the it builds up the tonal values very very well. And in any case, this is um, you know if I'm if I'm talking four sessions, three sessions at at. Um, 45 minutes and the last session perhaps to, to be an hour oh gosh what's that um, I, I don't know um, <laughs> three hours and something um, three three and three quarter hours or something like that I, I, I'm, I'm not a mathematician sorry I can't add things up on the fly I need a calculator um, so yes um, For example, now the the shade, the sh the dark darkness of his markings here are in shadow. The darkness of his markings here aren't necessary. So I'll use a lighter if they are slightly in shadow because there's a curve to his body in the fold, and, and that's where the that particular stripe is. So I'll probably use a a lilac into a yellowy color. Uh, let's see. So I can build up the darkness of these markings quite nicely. Um, just with the use of blending of with the blending of color. Because sometimes the blues, when they when they mingle with the with the oranges and umbers, for example, um, they darken. They darken substantially. So that's and it gives a richness as well. Yes, I'm quite happy with how this is, how this piece is coming along. Um, Here's some of these yellows if I want to do yours here. Let's bring in that just a pale kind of a creamy yellow. I'm just going to bring that in a little bit over here.
Yeah. Time. We've got about three or four minutes left for today's session, and I'm very, very happy with how this is progressing thus far. Let's bring in a little powdery blue and perhaps some lilac just below the chinny canini, the chinny chin chin. Once again. We've got cool colors in the in the shadow areas. This is white fur, but it's because it's in the shadowy areas, we've got a slight blueish bluish tint. Always work, working with the grain, with the direction that his fur lies on his body. It's very important to observe that. Because that, that adds to the dimensionality of the artwork. Again, I'm not going for I'm not attempting to, to, to get photorealism here. It's a semblance of it. It's an illusion of it. But I do need to spend the time working up these layers and working up, working up the hues of color and so on and so forth. Yes, that's coming in a lot better than the previous one. A lot. Uh, right, let's bring in some of this mauve or mauve or uh, lilac, as I prefer to call it. I suppose it's the correct kind of terminology. These colors. It's a nice soft but shadowy cool colouring. Okay, he's looking a little bit rainbowish at this point, but that's great. Um, I have some nice, um, colorful substance to work with, to work over um, in the next session, or in the final session rather, which is, which is the, which is the next one. Um, so yes, thank you for joining. I hope you've enjoyed the proceeds, and uh, and do join me again for the next one and for the final. For the fun, as I finish off this piece. Um, so, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, I bid you oodles and doodles of toodles. 
So until next time, guys, be good, be kind, be gentle, be caring, be loving, etc., etc. And uh, I hope to catch you on the flip side. Take it easy. Have a fantastic day further. Bye. And don't forget to doodle.